what are some of the hidden places glucose is that we may not see or may mm. not understand that we can't figure out on a day-to-day -day basis? Because I feel like yeah. when I went to that test of the no sugar cereal, mm. in my head that didn't have glucose, only for me to understand it was the rice that it was made from that was having that impact on me. Uh -huh. So where, where is, are there any others that you know that are hidden? Actually, breakfast food is usually a top offender, right? right? So orange juice, fruit smoothies, breakfast cereal, even if they say no sugar or low in sugar, that doesn't mean they don't contain glucose. It just mm -hmm. means they don't contain any table sugar, but they could also contain sugar from fruit, which is quote unquote natural. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be claimed as an added sugar in a mm -hmm. package, right? Breakfast foods, huge, huge, huge offenders. Um, and then kind of like funny things that you wouldn't expect, like eating a lot of grapes. <laughs> mm, yeah. If you eat 50 grapes, that's actually a lot of sugar because the fruit that we eat today has been bred to be extremely high in sugar and concentrated in sugar. But I think breakfast foods are one of the biggest ones. Oh, also dried fruit. Mm. People don't realize that it's not because something comes from fruit that it's good for you. Mm. Dried fruit or fruit smoothie or fruit juice can contain, you know, tens and tens of grams of sugar, even though it originally came from a fruit. But your body doesn't care whether sugar came from an orange juice and is now in an orange juice or whether sugar came from a beetroot and is now in a can of Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. right? Those sugar molecules will both lead to a glucose spike. Yeah, and it's interesting because... I think the way we've been trained to have a sweet breakfast, I've switched to savory breakfast last year, and that's something you are a big, that's big, a big, big hack of mine. Of. Yes. Yeah, talk to us about that switch. Well, listen, the glucose spike that we experience after breakfast is going to control the rest of our day. So if you eat in the morning something that is pure glucose, like most of us do, right? I grew up on orange juice and Nutella crepes. So I know. <laughs> Sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, but then yeah. at 1030, I was exhausted because I was crashing. My glucose levels were crashing and I was super, super hungry because after a big spike, you experience a big crash and that crash activates the craving center in your brain mm. and literally tells you, Jay, go find some chocolate, you know, and you cannot I resist. I know what that voice sounds yeah. like. <laughs> and you can't resist that urge. So your breakfast, if you're having a big glucose spike at breakfast, you're setting yourself up for a day of cravings, fatigue, inflammation, and you're going to feel quite awful. An important switch to make is to switch from a sweet breakfast to a savory breakfast built around protein, right? Whatever kind of protein you like, maybe it's dairy, maybe it's tofu, maybe it's protein powder, maybe it's leftover fish from last night, maybe it's eggs, whatever kind of protein you want, that's going to keep your glucose levels nice and steady. Add some healthy fats in there and you can have some starch like a slice of bread for taste, but importantly, a savory breakfast contains nothing sweet except if you want some for taste, some whole fruit, mm. right? And you know, all those sweet breakfast foods that you love, you don't have to say goodbye to them completely. The best time to have them is for dessert after lunch or after dinner. Mm. Because if you eat something that contains a lot of glucose, something starchy or sweet, after a meal, the glucose molecules are not going to arrive as quickly into your bloodstream mm. because there's already going to be food in your stomach. The worst time to eat starches and sugars is breakfast because mm. your body is super empty. So anything you eat, goes to your bloodstream in a second, mm. right? But it's actually the meal of the day where most of us eat just starches and sugars. Yeah. Think about the typical breakfast, orange juice, oats with honey on them, breakfast cereal, mm. you know, fruit smoothies. Oatmeal with raisins. Exactly. Yeah. And then you wonder why most of us feel so terrible throughout the day, mm. why it's 4 p.m. and we're exhausted and we need coffee or Red Bull. We have cravings all throughout the day and even at night. Your breakfast controls how you feel for the whole day. Mm. And I think switching from a sweet breakfast to a savory breakfast is almost like, you know, in the movies when they go through the mirror, it's a parallel universe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you really feel so <laughs> different. Absolutely. So, so, so different. All of a sudden you have steady energy. Your brain is clear. You feel good. You feel like yourself. You're not controlled. You're not a victim to these cravings anymore. Yeah.